realize that students memorize this equation, right? So therapeutic index uh, equals LD50 over ED50. And they memorize that for the test, and they think they're good to go. Well, the problem is, is that no one is ever going to ask you to calculate that number. So therapeutic index has to do with the dose-response curve, right? So the dose-response curve is increasing dose on the x-axis versus the response to the drug, right? So the response is something like, if it's pain, it's the amount of pain relief. If it's an infection, it's the amount of infection that is fixed by an antibiotic, right? It's the response. So uh, therapeutic index, the idea is that this is something that would come from uh, tri drug trials. Let's imagine that we uh, are a supervillain, okay? And we're gonna do, because <laughs> you have to be a supervillain in order to do this study. Uh, so say I, I'm a supervillain and I have my underwater base is filled with clones Let's make them clones of myself to keep it fair. I'm gonna test a new drug that turns them blue because I need to see more blue me's. Okay, so I, I test this drug and I find, this is by the way, log logarithmic, if you're interested in logarithms, that's what it is. All right, and I notice that as I increase the dose, um, that I get a certain response and then it, at some point, no matter how much I increase the dose, the, the Linnea clones never get any more blue, all right? Um, and so that's the dose response curve for my new drug that turns people blue, fine. Now I find that if I continue to try giving increasing and increasing doses to the Linnea clones, that at some point, if I give them a high enough dose, they start dying off, right? Because uh, when you, when you give a drug to higher and higher and higher levels, then that drug will not specifically only bind the protein that it's bound for. But as you increase the dose more and more, it'll just start binding all sorts of things and eventually uh, kill you because if it's stuck to everything, then your body can't work properly. So this is the, you know, this curve is sort of like effectiveness, which in this case is blueness. And this is toxicity, right? which would be where I start murdering the Linnea clones, so death. So say this is, you know, a dose of 10 grams gets me about half effectiveness, and a dose of 1,000 grams uh, causes death. That's why I needed to use clones of myself uh, in a alternate universe, because what I'm doing to my experimental subjects is giving them doses high enough to kill them. Obviously, if you're doing drug trials with humans, you can't give them doses higher and higher and higher until they die. That is unethical and you that you can't do that. <laughs> Usually these trials are done with animals and even then you may just be looking for toxicity. And these curves don't look like this. If you've ever done an experiment in a lab, you never get the curve that looks like that when you do your experiment in the lab, right? The, the dots are always kind of like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then you're like, oh no, I gotta make it look like a beautiful curve. Well, it turns out when you do these sorts of experiments, the part of the curve that is the most reproducible and the dots are closer to where you want the curve to be tends to be this middle part. So for that reason, when people are communicating their results for dose response curves, they usually take, you know, the dose where it was about 50% effective rather than 100% effective. Because this is the most reproducible part of the curve. That's why it's LD50 and ED50. It's just it's just a, a byproduct of the way that the uh, experiments are done. Okay, so anyway. All right, so say let's say uh, this is logarithm of dose. So let's say this is 1 and this is a, th is a thousand. So uh, uh, that would be 3, like log of uh, a thousand is three. So let's say 10 to the one, say that's 10 to the one, and this is 10 to the three. So that's the equivalent of 10, let's say 10 milligrams and a thousand milligrams. So if you take 10 milligrams of this blueness drug, it's about 50% effective in terms of turning you blue. And if you take a thousand milligrams of the drug, it's about 50% in, in terms of killing you, <laughs> right? So in this case, the therapeutic index equals a thousand milligrams over 10 milligrams, which is going to just be equal to 100. All right, so 
what does this really tell us? Because clinically, like I said, nobody's ever going to ask you what this number is. And this number is going to generally be a estimate anyway, because you can't do experiments where you murder 100% of your, your subjects so that you can like get this perfect curve. Well, what this is telling you is that the dose that causes death or toxicity or whatever you've measured is about 100 times the effective dose. So for this drug, let's call it, um, my last name is Boyev, so I'm going to call it Blue Boyev. Okay, that is not a real drug. I just made it up. Say I, uh, I give the recommended dose for Blue Boyev a daily dose of 10 milligrams. How poisonous is this drug? Because patients never read the instructions <laughs> on, on things. And you know, uh, poison control centers and nurses from doctor's office will get phone calls from people all the time. I took a double dose by accident. Oh, I took three of the dose. Oh, my grandma forgot and ate eight of the pills. You know, they're going to ask, is it okay? Do I need to go to the emergency room? How toxic is this drug? Well, if grandma accidentally takes four of Blue Boy Ev, I don't know why you were turning grandma blue, but whatever. So if grandma takes four pills of her Blue Boy Ev dose, is she probably going to die? No, because four times the dose is still only 40 milligrams, and you need a hundred times the dose before you can be sick. Okay, so the number is telling you how many times the normal dose can you take before you get sick. Now, in the handout, I have a thought question. Oh, I, t I ask what the therapeutic index is. And in that study, the effective dose, and I don't tell you at what level, but it's got to be 100% or less. The effective dose is one milligram. And I have volunteers who take... 20,000 milligrams. <laughs> That's 20 grams of the drug. Now that is not a very well designed study, I have to say. All right. And the volunteers in this experiment take 20 grams and everything's fine. There's no toxicity and they're not dead. So I say, well, what's the therapeutic index? Well, in this case, the therapeutic index is something over 20,000. So if I have a patient who's taking this drug, this fake drug, and they say, I, I accidentally took three pills, am I okay? Yeah, they're okay. They don't need to go to the emergency room because they would have to take 20,000 pills before they got sick. This is a big issue because, for instance, say you have a patient who is uh, suicidal and you have two different drugs you can try first for their depression. And one of them has a therapeutic index of 100 and one of them has a therapeutic index of three. Well, if they're suicidal, what's one way they could kill themselves is with their medication, right? So you're going to not want to give them an ex a drug with a very low therapeutic index because if they took a handful of those pills, they might die. So you're going to try to find drugs for depression that have high therapeutic indices. So this is a situation where a low therapeutic index means that if the patient takes more than the recommended dose, then they are at higher risk of having toxicity. If the therapeutic index is very high, it means that the patient can take more of the drug or the level in the bloodstream can be higher than normal without great risk to the patient from the drug. If the therapeutic index is one, that's a poison, right? Because the effective dose is the, is the deadly dose. So there you go. So if you are a K-pop enthusiast like me, and who isn't? I have a mnemonic. It goes to the tune of Overdose by EXO. It just goes, T-I, too low, you know, risk an overdose. Okay? T-I, too low, you know, risk is an overdose. <laughs> <laughs>